Steve, I'm excited for you to join us today to talk about the newest River North Closed-In Fund offering, the River North Opportunistic Municipal Income Fund, ticker RMI. So we were out in October raising capital for the fund and priced uh, about $120 million in assets at the end of October and now trading on the exchange under the ticker RMI. So maybe kick us off with uh, what's the strategy for RMI and what are you trying to accomplish? Sure. So RMI is a another relative value trading strategy from River North. Uh, what we're looking to do here is to try to generate alpha within the municipal bond market. And the strategy is pretty simple. We're going to be buying both discounted close-in funds in the muni sector. And we're also going to be buying cash bonds. And that cash bond manager is Mackay Municipal Managers. And the idea is just to make a relative value trading when the opportunity presents itself. When close-in fund discounts are wide, we're going to use more of the fund's capital to buy discounted closed-in funds. When discounts narrow, we'll push capital over to Makai Municipal Managers, and they'll buy cash bonds for the portfolio. Essentially, we're not timing the muni market. We're really timing the way we're getting that exposure. The investors are going to be getting tax-exempt income. But again, we think that there's trading alpha in the closed-in fund space. Uh, and we also think there's trading alpha within the municipal bond market. We think it's an inefficient uh, fixed income asset class. And we think Mackay, with their relative value approach, is a really good partner for the strategy. So maybe tell us a little about the guardrails on uh, the size of both the sleeves. So two sleeves, two managers, how big or small can those sleeves be? Sure. So the River North sleeve can be anywhere from 25 to 50% of the portfolio. Um, and obviously the Mackay balance would be, uh, Mackay would man be managing the balance. Um, coming out of the gate, we're, we, we guided investors that we'd be about 45% of the portfolio, which is certainly the high end of the range, given that 50% is the top. But we think the opportunity set today is, is really exceptional. And with closed on fund discounts where they are, we wanted to get maximum exposure to the asset class. Make a good point um, about where discounts are, and we'll circle back to that in a second. But certainly the municipal uh, component of the closed info market is about a third of the market, correct? So I guess it makes some sense to uh, have a strategy offering uh, that makes up a third of the market. Is that sort of something River North's always wanted to do? Yeah, it's been something that you know we have thought about for a while. And so the muni strategy was one that we wanted to launch, but we thought that it would work best in a closed end fund. And closed end funds are not easy to launch. And so right. we took our opportunity when it presented itself. And the opportunity presented itself because the landscape is just, I think, just so incredibly attractive. There's demand for you know, exposure to discounted muni closed end funds. Investors saw the opportunity. And so it was just kind of one of those you know, situations where we had been planning this for a long time. And when the opportunity presented itself, River North you know, quickly worked with uh, the underwriters. And you know, collectively, the team brought a new fund to market. Steve, looking at the Mackay Municipal Manager's sleeve for a moment, I know obviously you're uh, not a member of that uh, investment team, but just tell us a little bit about how they think about the muni space in, in the cash market. Is this a laddered buy and hold sort of passive strategy or do they think about things a little differently uh, in the muni market? Sure. So they definitely think differently and it's one of the reasons that they've excelled as a manager, but also one of the reasons that they work well with the strategy. Uh, you know, we didn't want to work with a, a buy and hold manager. You know, we need the capital to be flexible. We need to rotate between closed end funds and cash bonds. And so we need a manager that's focused on liquidity, QSIP securities, uh, trading volume, and really relative value because, you know, we wanted a manager that we could call capital from. We also wanted a manager that would generate potential alpha for the fund. And so Mackay, I think, is a very atypical manager within the municipal bond market. Uh, with their focus on you know, relative value, I think that sets them apart. Uh, you know, they're managing about you know, a little over $30 billion today. Um, you know, the, the team came, you know, Bob DeMella uh, and his team came from BlackRock, and they have had a lot of experience muni, managing muni capital, and they've also had a lot of experience looking at muni closed end funds. Interesting. And so it was really a natural fit uh, for, this, for, for RMI. So turning to RMI's portfolio, I know the uh, fund has really only been around for about 30 days, but are there any high-level comments you can make about the portfolio as it stands today? Sure. So I think the timing was, was good for the launch of RMI. And I say that because we're right in the midst of tax loss selling. And so investors that own municipal close on funds, and really actually municipals more broadly, investors are harvesting a loss. The asset class has had a negative total return. 
muni closed on funds have had a return you know four times worse than the asset right. class return and so there's a lot of supply in the market and so you know we did come to market as you said we raised about 120 million dollars which is a good chunk of change to put to work in the close on fund market quickly but the supply was just you know so overwhelming that we think we had our choice you know we basically deployed capital very quickly the fund is fully invested today uh, we've also added leverage to the portfolio as we got in investors at the IPO. And so today we're fully invested, uh, working up additional leverage through tender option bonds. Uh, but it was just kind of fortuitous timing that, you know, November was kind of a peak tax loss selling time. We've seen discounts at really, you know, historically wide levels, kind of in that 99th percentile wow. sort of range. And so we were really excited to get new capital. I felt like we were one of very, you know, a few buyers out there in the market. Uh, and it was, uh, it was quite frankly fun to put that capital to work in the month of November. Last question. Certainly, uh, investors look at municipals uh, for tax-free income. So is there any uh, transparency on RMI's distribution uh, going forward this early in the game? Sure. So we... We have set our initial distribution rate at 5.5%. The board adopted a level distribution. And so that will be the distribution rate uh, in the foreseeable future. Uh, the board will continue to declare dividends um, periodically. And I think that the 5.5% is going to include you know, both tax-exempt income, but we also are including what we think are potential capital gains. And so the 5.5% rate will be set, but the components of the distribution will include tax exempt income, uh, capital gains, and potentially return to capital. Uh, but you know where we stand today, we feel good about the distribution rate. We think the, the earnings power of the portfolio is strong. And from a trading perspective, from a close on fund discount perspective, you know, we think that there's a lot of potential alpha for discounts to narrow a lot from here. And so you know, it, it's unknown what will happen in the future, um, but I think the components of the distribution will be heavily weighted towards you know, net investment income will be kind of 75% of that with a balance coming from capital gains. Steve, congratulations on the capital raise uh, and the fortuitous timing, and uh, thanks as always for joining us. Thank you, Alan.